Ah, today we got the Panthers. Panthers went 5-11 and last season. First thing I'd like to say is I love the direction they're going. Uh, I just don't think this year is going to be the year for them. Um, and uh, straight into the player notes because they don't have any new logos or uniforms like so many other teams we've had this year. Uh, McCaffrey is a great player. Uh, week one, he had a wildcat type play where he faked a handoff to Cam Newton and then uh, took it himself up the middle on sort of like a counter play. They scored a touchdown. I kind of like that idea, the wildcat look for McCaffrey. He's such a good player that maybe they could implement more wildcat stuff with him this season. Um, I don't watch much Baylor, but I'm excited to see what Matt Rule brings to the table. Cam Newton was not healthy. This is the first two games of the season when he was playing last year, and it was very apparent. I remember watching the uh, Thursday night game against the Buccaneers and just being like, holy cow, this guy, I couldn't believe that he was even on the field because it's like, this is a completely different player from my memory of uh, what I had of him and just how, how at least his abilities before used to be very apparent and last season it was just like oh gosh what is going on with him so i mean i wasn't surprised when he then said uh the next week oh yeah i'm basically gonna sit out the rest of the year all right brian burns a uh, soon to be great edge player he's pretty good now but he didn't really his numbers weren't that crazy this year so i'm gonna say soon to be great edge player i really like him uh, more about Christian McCaffrey. I wouldn't pay a lot of running backs an insane amount of money just because the running back position basically has sort of become irrelevant nowadays. But Christian McCaffrey, I would pay instantaneously if I had the option. And uh, I think I put it in a note later that I wrote is the fact that he's only going for like $16 million a year, which sounds like a lot. But I mean, we just always get salary cap increases. And I mean, they don't for they don't have any other like crazy talents they have to pay this season so i really like giving him that contract i think it'll be well worth it um okay also he's probably the best wide out on the team dj moore is a good wide receiver but i mean he's he's pretty talented in the receiving game as well i can't believe this team was four and two at one point as i said they finished five and eleven but they were four and two at some point, and that just shows how the schedule gods can work for you sometimes. I mean, they, they were not a very good team last year. Um, and I think people knew that once Cam Newton was like, ah, oh, he's gone. And it's like, oh, okay. Uh, Brian Brian Burns, once again, he does everything pretty well. He's really an all-around player, which I like. It's That really makes him uh, just special, in my opinion. He, he plays everything very well. Uh, at the end of the... End of the half, they get a stop against the Packers when the Packers have two seconds left in the half, and they go for it from the one-yard line instead of trying just a field goal. The score was 14-10 to with Carolina in the lead, and I just thought it was funny because uh, basically two players just don't even get blocked at all by the Packers, and they get stuffed, and it's like, ah, geez, how did that not work? Well, they didn't block anybody. Um, there's multiple times in the season just be... Because when you're looking back on this season, you got to look at what was actually happening. And it was really like, um, I, I mean, the only things that you were seeing was basically, basically the entire season is a bunch of Christian McCaffrey highlights. Because, come on, he, he was basically the team last season. There's times where there's no blockers between him and the end zone, but there's three defenders in between him. And uh, he puts moves on all three defenders and finds a way into the end zone. It's insane. He's such a good player. Uh, I didn't, uh, there's a, the, against Washington this season, they actually recovered an onside kick. And from everything I've been hearing about onside kicks, I didn't know that any team had recovered a uh, onside kick besides the Falcons. So props to the Fan Panthers, but I don't think they won that game, even though they got that onside kick. Um... All right, where was I? DJ Moore is a pretty good is pretty good, but this team needs more help than they gained in the off season. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I wrote that before, but I don't know if I'm still thinking that. I mean, it gave me a little more time to settle, and I just think, I just think they need to spread the ball out a little more, not be so just McCaffrey dependent. Because I think DJ Moore and Curtis Samuel are both decent receivers, and with the addition of Robbie Anderson, that gives them a decent receiving core to work with. Also, I found out later that um, Curtis Samuel, 
DJ Moore, and uh, Christian McCaffrey. All three of those guys are either 24 years old or younger, which I definitely I feel like it, I feel like DJ Moore and um, Christian McCaffrey have been around longer than that, but they obviously haven't. So they're they're they haven't even gotten into their primes yet. They could. They could really improve this season and get a lot better, which is crazy to think for McCaffrey, but it would also be a big deal for DJ Moore if he could do that. Next, just like I did with the Buccaneers video, I've got to mention their new quarterback because of the fact that quarterback is such a significant position. Uh, just I went through a little bit of Teddy Bridgewater stuff and I got some notes on him. So, first off, I love the signing. I think it makes a lot of sense for them to get a quarterback in the building that they definitely believe that they can trust, and I definitely think he's a very trustworthy quarterback. Uh, lots of short passes. He's not going to take a lot, of, a lot of sacks, which is good. I mean, you eliminate sacks, it really helps your team. It really helps your team win games. Negative plays um, being turnovers, just like I talked about in the Bucks video. It was turnovers for the Bucks, or sacks even can hurt you tr tremendously and uh it, it, signing somebody like Teddy Bridgewater will limit both of those things which is very good. Uh he's very accurate short and even even later in the season once he started throwing some more intermediate routes he was putting those on the money too. But there wasn't very many opportunities last season where he really just loaded up and went long. So I didn't get to see much of that, but like I said, his intermediate and short passing seem to be on the money, but usually sticking to more short passing game, which is fine. If it gets you up and down the field, that's what you want to see. Um, uh, let's see, what else did you say? Uh, the one thing is the Saints O-line gave him really clean pockets a lot of the time, which I don't know if he'll be as likely to get in Carolina. I was thinking before I really looked at the Panthers roster that I didn't like their um, what they had in the offensive line room, especially because I was thinking about the fact that they traded Trey Turner or Tri Turner. I'm not sure how you say his first name, uh, but they did acquire Russell Okun in that trade. So the offensive line, really, the tackles and the centers are. The tackles and the center are the strong points of that offensive line, while the guards are a little weaker. So I I don't think the uh, blocking will be as great as for New Orleans, but I think the blocking will be okay. And if he can get some decent looks, especially just quick, easy throws, which I'm sure the Panthers will help him do. Matt Rule probably understands what type of offense they're going to need to run, and he'll I, th I think he'll be able to figure that out pretty quickly. Um, it seems like every ball he throws is where he wants to put it, so that's good. And his twite, his twite, his tight window throws were also very impressive. Okay, now some stats from the season for the Panthers that were crazy. Uh, 19 touchdowns for McCaffrey. Wow, that's not really a surprise at all. Uh, they have no idea who their second running back on this team is. It's absolutely insane. Curtis Samuel was... The, second on the team in rushing yards. I mean, it wasn't even... It was like... Ryan Tannehill... Sorry, wow. Ryan Tannehill. Ryan Fitzpatrick led the Dolphins in rushing this season, but um, he was he's at least a quarterback, so like he's taking off and stuff, and he's scrambling. The second, the second place person on this team for rushing yards was a wide receiver, which just is like, how how did that happen? I'm guessing jet sweeps and stuff, but... Yeah, uh, McCaffrey had 116 catches, uh, DJ Moore had 87, Curtis Samuel had 54, holy cow, I didn't even realize that Christian McCaffrey surpassed 100 receptions during this season, that was crazy to find out, um, it's, it, it puts him 18th for single season receptions, which is just absolutely insane, <laughs> he's a running back and he's 18th on the single season receptions list. Um, yeah, but all three of them are 24 or younger, as I said. Uh, Greg Olson led their tight end group in reception, but in receptions, but he's gone now. Is Ian Thomas the answer? Because holy cow, I, I, I don't like that. Maybe in fantasy though. I mean, if you really need a late round pick and say, oh geez, I got no idea where to go for tight end. Well, the Panthers have to play someone as their tight end number one. So I guess Ian Thomas maybe. 
Um, there were four games that Kyle Allen didn't start at QB, and Cam Newton and Will Greer did not manage to throw a touchdown pass in any of those, which was funny. Uh, Keekley and Eric Reed were the top two tacklers on this team, but both are gone now, and Shaq Thomas was third. Um, I like Shaq Thomas, but he didn't have much of a flash or really any impact plays last season, which isn't good, but he, his numbers looked okay. Uh, Trey Boston, James Bradbury, and Dante Jackson all had three interceptions. That was good for the secondary. Also, uh, Trey Boston and Bradbury also surpassed 10 passes defended. But completely forgot when I was writing that, that James Bradbury got signed by the Giants, so that doesn't really help them. Uh, Mario Addison led the team in sacks, and he's gone. It just feels like so many of the key players on last year's team are just gone, and it's, it's crazy. Even though I say Christian McCaffrey was the whole team last season, Lots, lots of other guys are out of the building. Uh, Shaq Thomas got 11 tackles for loss. He's back, so I guess that's good. Uh, look for a new kick returner because they're, there's, they, their kick returner last year, their best kick returner last year was Ray Ray McLeod, and um, he's basically been swapping back and forth from the Bills to the Panthers roster, so I've kind of paid attention to that, but I they need a new kick returner. they got to do something different in that game. Uh it's really weird to think that they had Kwan Short, Gerald McCoy, and Don Terry Poe all on the team at the same time. Um, so they, I'm pretty sure they were running a 4-3 before. I'm not sure what Rule wants to do on defense, but I'm guessing they're going to continue running the 4-3. But with that 4-3, I mean, Kwan Short was injured nearly all the last season. So I guess this kind of makes sense. But if Kwan Short hadn't been injured, it would have been really cool to have Gerald McCoy, Don Terry Poe, and Quan Short shuffling around in the interior. And actually, Quan Short, I'm I'm not sure what uh, how heavy Quan Short is, or if he's he may actually play more end than a uh, defensive tackle. I I really don't know. I'm just assuming that he's playing on the interior. Uh, but with how much talent the defense had last season, it I, they almost kind of underperformed in my opinion, which is it's, it's kind of sad because the defense. Defense may have gotten worse, um, and they were already underperforming. Okay, injuries last season that were noteworthy. Cam Newton, obviously, holy cow. If he played, this is completely different. He's probably still on the roster if he's healthy, and now he doesn't have a job at all. Greg Little, tackle, thought he was important. Then I realized Russell Okun got brought into the building, so he's probably not playing significant snaps this season unless somebody else gets injured again. Uh, Graham Gano missed most of the season, so... He's back. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm thinking that he's probably going to easily still have the number one job. Uh, I think Joey Sly was the kicker while he was hurt. So I think Gano's safe. Um, And he's been a good kicker for a long while for them. Chris Hogan was injured most of the year. He may be washed up at this point. It probably doesn't matter. I'm pretty sure he's still just sitting in the free agent market. But he wasn't able to help him, and they may have been thinking that he was going to be able to. And as I said before, Kawan Short was also injured. Now, here is a list of gentlemen that they have acquired and lost. Now, in advance, I'd just like to say I am I would like to apologize if I missed anybody, but this team has a ton of uh, shuffling all over the place. Um, it, it, so if I missed anybody they gained or lost, I'm sorry, but there's they're pretty long list of both. So first guy they acquired, Teddy Bridgewater. Already talked about him. Don't need to really touch more on him. He's he's gonna be a good upgrade from what they had from last season. No, uh, Robbie Anderson. I really like him as a receiver. I liked him for a long time for the Jets. It seemed like last year was kind of a down year for him, at least in terms of. Um, how much I saw him, but I mean, last year was kind of an awful year for the Jets as a whole, so I don't know if I should be too worried about that. I think Robbie Anderson will come in and be a good receiver for them. Uh, Eli Apple, he's he's kind of a middle-of-the-road corner, don't really know what we got there, but um, since they lost Bradbury, he may come into the building and be the uh, number two corner. Uh, to hear Whitehead comes in at linebacker, very important considering Keekley left. Um, he's probably going to be the one taking over that role, probably play calling duties because 
for some for some weird reason, I don't really know much about this. I'm just assuming that Shaq Thompson Thompson will not be the ones calling the plays on defense. Uh, then they brought in PJ Walker, XFL MVP. That's well. That's I'm guessing that's the reason they traded Kyle Allen. They must have been pretty confident in him. So um, I don't know if I love that. I don't know if I love uh, just getting rid of your backup QB before even seeing the other guy in the building. Also, your new starting QB also is just coming into the building and also hasn't been in the building before. So it's interesting to just be like, hey, eh, yeah, we'll bring in two new QBs without having anybody in the building who's been here before. But it is a completely new coaching staff, so I mean... We're throwing everything out the window anyways. I don't know what's the difference. Then uh, a few more guys to talk about. Already talked about Russell Okun. Farrow Cooper's coming to the wide receiver room. He, pretty good returner. He could take over the kick return duties. Uh, maybe. We'll see about that. Uh, Justin Burris, safety from the Browns. It looks like he's going to be a starter as of now, which I was really surprised about because I actually looked at their draft class before realizing um, what their plans were for the safety room uh, based off who they acquired in free agency, and that was kind of weird. Now let's talk about who they lost. They lost Eric Reed. I really like Eric Reed as a player, and I really hope he gets a job, but I'm when, when I know I've known he's a free agent and I haven't been looking into the Panthers, so I've been wondering why... They haven't been re-signing him, but actually looking at the moves they make, it, it makes sense that they haven't given him a contract. But Eric Reed is too good of a player to be a free agent right now, and he better end up on a roster before the season. That It just actually really angers me that he's not on a team. I think he's way too talented to not be on a team. Uh, Luke Keekley, the next person they lost, I mean, obviously he's he may honestly be one of the best middle linebackers in NFL history, but due to this short career, maybe overlooked in the future since he's deciding to retire early but if he thinks it's it's bad for his body then it's definitely his decision and I can't fault him for making that decision um Kyle Allen traded him James Bradbury left talked about that Don Terry Poe and Gerald McCoy left that's weird that was really weird to me to see that both these guys were in the building last year and then they both left nearly immediately because I'm uh, Poe may have been here for two years, but I feel like Gerald McCoy was only here for one. So, um, interesting. They both had very short stints here and then immediately left. Interesting. They trade Trey Turner for Russell Okun. I guess they're, by doing that, they're deeming left tackle more important than the guard position. Then, obviously, Cam Newton, another guy from this team that isn't even really lost. He's just still a free agent and no one's signing him. Uh, I've, highly highly doubt he ends up back on this team though so we're just gonna leave him in the lost category um and he was released actually i think i don't think his contract has expired he was just released uh then greg olson the last guy they lost once again he was their tight end reception leader and he is now in seattle so that's i don't know what's going on in the tight end room all right now we can talk about their draft picks First up, I actually, their their draft is a very, very strange draft, in my opinion. I mean, it's it just feels, I'm like, what is going on? But I do feel the team as a whole is moving in the right direction, but then some of these picks I love and some of these picks I hate. But I will say, the early picks are very good picks, in my opinion, which is probably the most important. You want to hit on the early picks if they're the most important. So Derek Brown at number seven, the defensive tackle from Auburn, they replace Gerald McCoy and Don Terry Poe because Kawan Short's coming back, and then I'm sure Derek Brown will be next to him if they stick in that 4-3 look, as I talked about earlier. Um, he's a great player. He was he he was probably he was probably one of the best players in the draft, and they got him at number seven. Like I mean, he may have been like a top three player in the draft, in my opinion, and they got him at number seven. I mean. I just really like that pick. It makes a ton of sense to me. Next up, second round, uh, sixth overall in the second round, 38th overall. Uh, the Ater Gross Matos, a uh, defensive end from Penn State. I thought he was going to go in the first round. He's an edge player. And uh, so now, next season, 
Brian Burns is the one guy I said I really liked on this D-line. And then Kwan Short's returning. Derek Brown's going to be next to him in the middle. And potentially, Yatur Gross Matos wins the opposite edge or defensive end spot. And if that happens, I actually really like where this D-line is headed and looking towards the future. you got Kwan Short being that one veteran in there, while the other three are all pretty young, but very talented players, and I really like to, I will really like to see where that D-line goes. Because I also think for where they selected Yatur Gross Montos, he's a very good player getting him at 38th overall. Next, last pick of the second round, they ended it up. They ended up with somehow. They uh, selected Jeremy Chin, a safety from Southern Illinois. And uh, Chin is basically... Chin has all the traits about Eric Reed that I loved. And he may actually, at this point, be a better player in his career than Eric Reed was when he came out at this point. Um, so Jeremy Chin's like a perfect replacement for Eric Reed. I love that. I'm just, uh, I'm just wondering. I don't really like the idea of Justin Burris playing over him, but they they may end up doing that. Honestly, they just may want him to sit on the bench and develop for a while, because uh, Trey Boston's gonna have the opposite safety spot, and I think that I, I don't Trey Trey Boston isn't sitting down because Trey Boston played well last season. He's not he's not gonna be benched, but uh. I, I don't want Jeremy Chin sitting the bench because I really like him, but he may end up on the bench for a little while. Next up, fourth round, seventh overall in the fir- fourth round, uh, Troy Pride Jr., a cornerback from Notre Dame. I have an issue with this. I don't like this pick nearly at all because it seems like when, I, when I'm watching a corner and the notable plays from them are tackles, I'm not thinking, oh boy, I love this cornerback prospect for their tackling ability. I really hope my cornerback can have 100 tackles this season. Because really, I realize that if we're playing, if we're, there's two issues here. If we're playing the run, I don't want the play to ever get out far enough where my corner has to make the tackle. So I'm not valuing a corner's tackling ability because it it just doesn't seem necessary to worry about his tackling ability in the run game. Then you talk about, well, if it's thrown and completed near him, he could make the tackle. Well, I hate that idea either because it's like, shouldn't you be good enough in coverage as a cornerback that you're not letting up a ridiculous amount of catches that you need to be consistently making tackles. I understand that it's going to happen sometimes and you're going to need to make tackles sometimes. But when it's like your number one trait is your tackling ability as a corner, I don't like it. Okay, I won't say much more about it, but they also picked a cornerback. And and since since it's basically the exact same concept, they picked a cornerback in the seventh round by the name of Stanley Thomas Oliver III. Cornerbacks have bet the best names in the draft every year, and um, I just think that's noteworthy. But he's also the same thing. He's another tackling corner, and I don't understand the logic behind um, just valuing tackling at the corner position at all. It just it just hurts my brain. Uh, there's two more players to talk about, though. I'll try to get through them pretty quick. Uh, Kenny Robinson Jr., safety from West Virginia. He also played... In the XFL, I did not know that XFL players could enter the NFL draft this season. I just assumed if you were in the XFL, you would come in straight from free agency. But he entered the draft, and he got selected by um, the Panthers. And I actually really like that pick. I think that he'll be a very good player for them. Uh, Seriously, I just hate that he's playing the safety position because now he's got Trey Boston, Jeremy Chin, and Justin Burris in front of him for him to see any playing time on the field. But uh, I really like his talent. I mean, he was playing really well in the XFL, and he was making plays at West Virginia, too. So I really like that pick. Next, uh, they got a guy. Next and final player to mention, I should say, is Bravion Roy. He's a defensive tackle from Baylor. I, he's, he's all right. I just wonder if uh, the real reason that he got selected by the Panthers is because of the Matt Rule connection. I think, once again, good player. Just like I, like I said, though. I just wonder if the rule connection is the real reason that he came. But I actually think he is a good player. 
And finally, we get to talk about who they're playing this season and how I think they'll do. Now, I am so sorry to the Panthers that you are playing in the NFC South because the NFC South is going to be absolutely miserable. It's going to be terrible to you. Um, I don't I don't like your chances winning many NFC South games. I'm going to say against the Falcons, Saints, and Bucks, home and away, you may take one out of those six games. I mean, those are three very talented teams, and um, they're pro- they're still too far in development to, for me to say anything more than really one game. I could see them winning two games, but yikes, more than that would be tough. But, you know, you got division rivals, though. Division rivals are kind of weird and get funky. Um, all right, so one in five after the division games, but now let's talk about who else they're going to play at home. So, they're going to play the Cardinals at home, the Raiders at home, the Broncos at home, the Lions at home, and the Bears at home. Now, the last two games I mentioned, Bears and Lions, I think those are games that they could take. And uh, really, I think they could potentially beat uh, the Broncos, Raiders, or Cardinals too. And, uh, geez, I, I, I'm going to say wins against the Bears, Lions, that, that puts them at 3-5, and five, and then we got to talk about the Broncos, Raiders, and Cardinals. I don't love their chances against the Broncos or Cardinals, but they are the home teams in those games. And uh, the Raiders games, I do like their chances, but I think the Raiders are... I, didn't, I don't think they're a great team, but I think they're a decent team, so they could be... They could be a tough outing for them. So I think out of those three games, they'll grab one of those, so... That'll take them from three and five, and then those three games they go one and two, so that'll be four and seven with the five away games they have left. The five away games they have left is first against Washington. They can go to Washington and uh, win. And I don't really think that's much up for debate. That win in Washington will make them five and seven, and then they have these four games left. They're going to have to go to the L.A. Chargers, go to the Kansas City Chiefs, go to the Packers, and uh, go to the Vikings. I don't like their chances going to Minnesota, Green Bay, or Kansas City. I mean, they're pretty much non-existent in my opinion. So they'll drop those three games, and uh, I think they'll be able to... I think they could go to uh, L.A. and beat the Chargers, though. So I'll give them a win against the Chargers. So... First season for Matt Rule, first season for a lot of new pieces on this team, also losing a lot of pieces from last season. The transfer is probably going to be difficult. Like I said, I think they're headed in the right direction, but I don't think you're looking at a playoff team. I don't think this team's going to have any crazy um, surprises. I think they're going to go about 6-10. and 10. But... Be headed on the right track. I will say that. Definitely headed on the right track. But I think we're looking at just a 6-10 and 10 team here. And uh, that's my final prediction for the Carolina Panthers this season. So, uh, if you enjoyed the video, thanks for watching. 2020 president candidate.